Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpabana chapam Animadi biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhavani Marali Mandagamana Mahalavanya Shevadhi Sarvaruna Navadyangi Sarva Bharana Bhusita Shivakameshwarankashta Shiva Svadhina Vallabha Namaste. So this Sahasranam, a thousand names of the goddess, Lalita. Huh? Lalita means a beautiful woman, a playful woman. Uh, she's enjoying. She's not so serious. Um, this world that she embodies and creates is like a plaything for her. It's part of her loving sport with Shiva. Now, as we went over last time, she and Shiva are not separate. They're like two sides of the same body, the Aradhanishwara form. So because of this, they both have the same purpose. They are completely aligned. They're not like ordinary couples, you know, who fight. <laughs> and have misunderstandings and hurt each other emotionally. They're not like that at all. They're like one person with two bodies. So this is the Supreme. This is God. God slash Goddess. Uh -huh. They are always together. And so like one of the names that we're going to look at today is Shiva. There's Shiva and Shiva. Just like Kameshwari and Kameshwara. You see, they're just two sides of the same coin. So let's take a look at these namas from today. Marali Mandagamana. Her walking gait is like a female swan. When she comes out of the kunda, when she's invoked in a sacrifice and she comes out and appears from the kunda, which is the, the ritual uh, bowl where the offerings are put, which has the inscription of the Sri Chakra, the Sri Yantra. So when she comes out, she has a particular gait of walking. See, we've been describing her form from the head down, and now we're talking, last time we talked about her feet, now we're talking about her gait, her way of walking. It's like a female swan. If you've ever seen swans, they kind of sway when they walk. Huh? She's like completely uninhibited. She's like, <laughs> here are the gods and goddesses, right? In charge of all the material elements and the universe. And she just casually saunters up to them. <laughs> She's so cool. So, it, although her gait is compared to swans, actually it's incomparable. There's nobody like her. She's incomparable in every way. Soundarya Lahari 91 says, O oh, goddess of graceful gait, your household swans as if intent on practicing to balance their steps with tripping gait, do not abandon your feet. So, she has pets, huh? She has lions, she has swans and other birds. She's very famous for holding a cuckoo, or a parrot rather, a parrot on her hand. 
And this parrot is her spy. He flies everywhere and <laughs> comes back and tells her what's going on. But actually, she already knows. Parrot is just a symbol. So this Nama concludes the description of her form. And the next group of Namas is going to describe her beauty in general. And then we're, we'll go into a section which describes her abode. So the next Nama is 48. Mahalavanya Shevadhi. She is the treasure house of beauty. Saundarya Lahari 12 says, the best of thinkers such as Brahma and others are at great pains to find suitable comparison to your beauty. Even the celestial damsels, out of great eagerness to get a glimpse of your splendor, mentally attain a condition of absorption into Shiva, which is unobtainable even by penance. Now, this is very amazing. The society girls of the heavenly planets, the dancing girls uh, of the court of Indra, they are known for their beauty, but they consider themselves all to be understudies of Lalita. Lalita is the greatest beauty. There's no comparison on any account. <laughs> so they meditate on her. You know how young girls especially are always meditating on stars, you know, famous movie stars and following their fashions and like that. So in the same way, the heavenly ladies meditate on Lalita. She's the leader of them all. And she sets the fashions in the heavenly planets. She is the one who they meditate on and imitate in order to seem uh, beautiful and desirable and cool. <laughs> so the point is they meditate on her but they attain concentration on Shiva, the Nirguna Brahman. Now, how is this possible? Because, as we said before, Shiva and Shakti are just two sides of the same being. That meditation on her leads to realization of Shiva. Meditation on Saguna Brahman leads to realization of Nirguna Brahman. How is this possible? Well, the mind has to be concentrated, but the mind cannot be concentrated by force. If you try it, you'll find out. <laughs> you try to force the mind to concentrate and meditate, and it's going to jump all over the place like a crazy monkey. You know, and you'll be at great pains even to follow it. <laughs> it moves so fast. The Buddha, who was a great composer of similes and metaphors, was even stumped by trying to describe how quickly the mind changes. He says, the mind changes so fast, I can't find a suitable metaphor to describe it. So if even the Buddha was stumped, what about us? Anyway, to actually control and concentrate the mind, one has to have an object of meditation that is so attractive, so beautiful that the mind is absorbed out of pleasure. This is the key to deep meditation. Sarvaruna. Sarvam means everything. and Aruna means red. Everything associated with her is red, huh? Like this bindu, dark red color. I love this color, huh? Because everything about it is related to compassion. Her compassion is just unlimited and it flows from her like waves. It's described in the scriptures. The Saundarya Lahari 93 says, Karuna kachid aruna. Her compassion, which is red in color, is beyond comprehension. 
Now the same Nama is in Lilalita Trishati, Nama 138. Lalita Trishati is 300 names of the same goddess, the Lalita goddess. But these names are so extremely elevated that they lead one almost immediately to self-realization and moksha. So, of course, we're going to be doing a series on them <laughs> and publishing them. Uh, but later on, after we finish these thousand names, which are the preliminary stage, the preparation. See, the whole strategy of this thousand names is that it begins by describing her beautiful form. Then the mind will be attracted to this form, which is beyond compare in the whole universe. Uh, her form, her voice, her way of walking and standing, her joking and laughing are all so beautiful and melodious, uh, so harmonious and attractive that the mind is automatically attracted to them, even in dreams. And so the meditation can go on even while one is asleep. And then in the ultimate stage, one attains Shiva. Now, this is the strategy of these thousand names. Next, Anavadyangi. Every part of her body is flawless and in accordance with Samudrika Lakshana. We talked about Samudrika Lakshana. It's a scripture that describes the extraordinary bodily symptoms of exalted personalities. And these bodily symptoms are all present in her form. So we can understand that she is the epitome of beauty, grace, and all good qualities. Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities, has to be meditated first. When we meditate on Saguna Brahman or Shakti, Lalita, then once the mind is fixed, we automatically start to realize Nirguna Brahman. And this is something you just have to experience. You just have to take my word for it. <laughs> or you can view our series on the Mahashodashi Mantra and experience it for yourself. Sarvabharana Bhushita. She is adorned with all types of ornaments. The different scriptures that describe her, Kalika Purana mentions 40 types of ornaments, and the Parashurama Kalpa Sutra, which is one of the main texts on the Sri Chakra Puja, the ritual puja, or Sri Vidya, mentions even more ornaments. And uh, again, to mention the Lalita Trishati, Nama 140, Sarvabharana Bhushita, conveys the same meaning. The next Nama, Shivaka Meshwarankasta, describes her seating posture. She is seated on the left thigh of Shiva. So this is the form of Saguna Brahma, that Shiva is sitting there in lotus posture, and she's sitting on his left thigh. They're very intimate. You know, they're, they're, they're really uninhibited. <laughs> they're wild. They live in the forest. You know, especially Shiva lives in the forest. And he had, has no use for clothes <laughs> or any of the trappings of civilization. He's a wild forest man. But mostly he spends his time in meditation. On what? On his self. <laughs> Because this is the real pleasure. You know, other pleasures in life are there, and certainly we can't deny them. But <laughs> the pleasure of self-realization is just beyond compare because it has no beginning and no end. This is why in the last episode I described the secret of the golden flower as being concentration 
on the consciousness of consciousness. How wonderful it is that consciousness can be aware of itself. And when we focus on this, concentrate on it, well, you just have to try it for yourself. <laughs> Get the result, which is bliss. So why, why does she sit on his left thigh? Because the heart is on the left side of the body. And the heart symbolizes life, energy, love, so many things. The heart is really the center of the energies of the body. If the heart fails, finished. <laughs> so today the biggest killer, the biggest cause of death is heart disease, heart failure. And I've had heart problems myself at different times in my life. And I've noticed that each time it's when I get around negative people who are giving negative emotional energy. So I've made a, a firm resolve to stay away from those kind of people. You won't find them here. If anybody shows up in the comments of being negative on this channel, off with their heads, <laughs> they're banned. Huh? One strike policy. Make one comment that of, of negative emotional uh, tone, and you're out of here. Bye-bye. So the same goes for our course site and our chat site, our community. So there, there aren't any negative people there and we won't allow them, we won't tolerate them because they spread emotional cancer and heart disease. The next name is Shiva. There's no difference between Shiva and Shakti. They are the same being, but in different aspects. Shiva is Nirguna without qualities. Shakti is Saguna with qualities. Therefore, she is known as Prakasha Vimarsha Mahamaya Swarupini. Huh? That's a mouthful. <laughs> what does it mean? Prakasha means Shiva. He is self-effulgent. He's brilliant. He is easily seen. Uh, he's independent. He needs no source of energy. He needs no platform. He needs no world. Uh, he is the basis of everything. He is the Brahman. And then she is called the Vimarsha. Vimarsha means reflection. And there's a beautiful shloka in the Srimad Bhagavatam that describes Maya as that reflection which appears to be in darkness. See, actually there is no darkness. <laughs> everything is light. Everything is Brahman. Everything is pure consciousness and bliss. But Maya creates the illusion of darkness and then becomes the objects in that world, in that space, that reflect the light of Shiva. So she's Shiva's mate, Sh Shiva. Huh? Shiva is the feminine form of the word Shiva, which means auspicious. So let's see if there's anything else here. So th she is the three types of Shakti. Icha Shakti, which means will, uh, the Jnana Shakti, which means knowledge, and the Kriya Shakti, which means action. So she is these three different kinds of Shaktis, and these three Shaktis, along with the Ananda Shakti, are still in the non-dual state. They're non-dual because they're not separate from Shiva. And because they're part of Shiva, they are directly Brahman. So when we worship her, we worship her as Shakti. And finally, Svadhina Vallabha. Her consort Shiva belongs to her alone. Uh, she doesn't mess around. She doesn't fool around. And neither does he. 
Well, how can they? They're, they're intimately joined together as one. Huh? People aspire to this. You know, people talk about soulmates and stuff like this, which is bogus. But anyway, they would like to have this kind of state. But actually, it's no problem. Everything that we think we are is actually her, is actually Shakti. Huh? Take this body, for example. I've many times made this example that when we leave the body at night in sleep, it keeps breathing, the heart keeps beating, the stomach keeps digesting food, and so on. Everything is going, huh? Who is doing that? Who is the controller in the body, actually? Not the so-called self or ego, <laughs> but Kundalini. Kundalini is the life force, the life energy pervading the whole body. And she is the one who is responsible for maintaining the body, keeping it in balance. And of course, if we displease her, she can really mess with us. <laughs> because we think we're the body, anything that goes wrong with the body becomes a big, a big problem for us. So we should be in tune with her, and then we attain beautiful state of being and beautiful health. Now, there's a lot more that I can say about these namas. But what you really should do is download the text that's in the video description, which contains the complete information about each one of these namas. And also chant these namas. Chant this Lalita Sahasranam and get the full benefits. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.